What's up guys? This is Engineer Jack. So ngayon, yung pag-usapan naman natin dito sa Structural Theory is about the concepts of axial, shear, torsional, flexural rigidities, and stiffness of structural members. Or ito yung concepts of external and internal forces. So una, pag-usapan natin yung equilibrium of structures. So a structure is considered to be in equilibrium if initially at rest, it remains at rest when subjected to a system of forces and couples. So for example, uh, meron tayong residential building na subjected to dead load and live load. So usually, itong dead load and live load nag to guys sa floor loads natin. So ito yung combination of own weight ng structure and yung live loads or these are the moving loads na kinukuha natin guys sa NCP or sa code natin. So yung building natin or for example, this is a residential building, uh, subjected din yan sa rain load natin na dinadala ng roof natin. And pwede din may wind load. These are environmental load. And yung structure natin, pwede din maka-experience ng earthquake load na magka-create ng vibration in our structures. If a structure is in equilibrium, then all its members and parts are also in equilibrium. And in order for a structure to be in equilibrium, all forces and couples or moments, including all support reactions, acting on it must balance each other. So as you can see, meron tayong equations dito and these are called equations of equilibrium of space structures or 3D structures. So meron tayong summation of forces, uh, Fx, or summation of forces along the x-axis equals 0, summation of forces along the y-axis equals 0, and summation of forces along the z-axis equals 0. And meron din tayong summation of moments equals 0 at x, y, and z axis. So ngayon, pag nasatisfy natin itong summation of forces equals 0, ibig sabihin, uh, there will be no resultant force acting on the structure. So ibig sabihin, pag wala tayong resultant force, uh, syempre, talagang hindi talaga gagalaw yung uh, structure natin, magiging stable siya. So walang deformation tayo, mga ganun. And pag nasatisfy naman natin itong summation of moment equals 0, uh, there will be no resultant copper then or moment acting on the structure. Na syempre, pag walang moment, walang bending, or wala din tayong rotation, dapat na equilibrium ng structure natin. Meron din, din tayong equations for plane structures. So as you can see, meron tayong tatlong equations lang na ginagamit natin for 2D structures na summation of forces along the x-axis equals 0 lang. And summation of Fy equals 0 and summation of Mz equals 0. So tatlong equation lang guys ang ginagamit natin for plane structures. And all the equilibrium equations must be satisfied simultaneously for the structure in equilibrium. So kanina, uh, uh, dapat guys, lahat ng equations natin na inequate natin sa zero, dapat talagang masatisfy natin. Ibig sabihin, there will be no resultant forces and there will be no resultant couples or moments. The forces and couples to which a structure may be subjected can be classified into two types. We have the external forces and internal forces. External forces are the actions of other bodies on the structure under consideration. We have another term for external forces. We have applied forces. And ang reaction forces, these are also an external force. So now applied forces, example niya is the loads na nag sa structure, example, the dead loads, live loads, and weed loads, na yung dead loads natin, kinocompute natin, depende sa materialis natin, depende sa size ng uh, members natin, depende kung anong materialis na ginamit natin sa structure. And yung live loads natin, uh, usually given yan sa building codes natin, sa NCP given yan, uh, titingnan lang natin yung category, and may table yan guys sa NCP. And yung wind load natin, na, na critical talaga tong isolve guys, kasi mas mahirap siya isolve. And ayun, yung wind load natin, kinocompute din yan. So, yung applied forces natin, usual known. Kung baga, given na yan. So, yung reaction ng forces naman, uh, or reactions, are the forces exerted by supports on the structure. And ito talaga guys, yung sinosolve natin, kasi unknown nga yung reactions natin. So, if we have external forces, meron din tayong internal forces. And these are the forces and couples exerted on a member or portion of the structure by the rest of the structure. Or, these forces develop within the structure and hold the various portions of it together. So, for example, uh, meron tayong truss, guys. And paano ba natin makikita yung external and internal forces in our structures? Uh, as you can see, meron tayong 2D trusses. And pag kinonect natin, guys, yan, 
So, i-connect ko guys yan ng isang uh, members. And ang tawag sa horizontal members na yan, these are beams. And meron tayong terminology dyan sa, para sa roof natin na ang tawag is purlings. Beam siya kasi horizontal siya. And siya guys yung nagkakonek sa mga joints guys no, ng 2D trusses natin. Pag naging ganyan na yung drawing niya, ibig sabihin 3D truss na yun. So, these are the assumptions for analysis of trusses. All members are connected at their end by frictionless ball and socket joints in space trusses. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung joints natin, hinge connection yan, walang moment tayo dyan, or yung moment natin equal to zero. Pangalawa, all loads and support reactions are applied only at the joint. So, guys, kung mag-apply tayo ng loads, hindi pwede tayo maglalagay sa members, no, ng trusses natin. So, lilagay lang natin sa mismong joints, uh, yung kulay po na yan, nag-indicate yan ng hinge connections or joints natin. So, dyan lang tayo pwede guys maglagay ng loads. And another assumption, the members are subjected only to actual loads or actual forces. So, wala tayo guys dito sa trusses natin, uh, walang bending, walang shear, only actual forces lang. Or, yung dinadala ng members natin, normal forces. Ngayon, for example, yung 3D structure natin is subjected to a rain load, yung magdadala ng load is the roof. Yung ililipat na naman ng roof natin, ng roofing material natin to the purlins. Then to the purlins, lilipat naman ng purlins to the truss natin, then truss to the columns. Paano ba nangyari yun? For example guys, ito na nga mismo yung purlins natin, yung beams natin. Yung dinadala ng beams natin is the dead load and the roof line load. Yung dead load is the weight of the roof natin guys, or the own weight ng purlins, own weight ng roofing natin, own weight ng roofing materials. Yung LR natin, these are the roof line load, or usually this is the ring load. So, ito yung dadaling guys ng mga purlins natin and magkakaroon tayo ng reactions uh, vertical component lang kasi wala, mang, wala naman tayo guys na horizontal forces, no? Tapos wala tayong moments kasi yung connections nga natin sa trusses natin is ball and socket or hinge connections. So, itong mga reactions naman ito naman guys yung dadaling na na, ng truss natin na naka-apply nga sa joints natin. So, kung pataas guys sa reactions ng purlins, magiging pababa yan sa truss natin pag nilipat natin sa truss para or equilibrium. Then, yung dinadala ng truss, syempre, magkakaroon din tayo ng reactions. And ito na mag mismo yung reaction yung dadali ng columns natin. So, itong guys sa mga reactions na dinadala ng truss natin, these are external forces. And the reactions, external forces din. Ngayon yun, yung internal force natin, ito yung mga forces na dadali yung mga members natin ng trusses. Ay, yung actual force natin sa mga members natin, yung dadali ng mga members natin, pwedeng compression force or tension force force. Pwedeng actual compression lang yung dadali ng members or pwedeng actual tension. Another example guys is a beam. As you can see, meron tayong simple beam dito na ang beam natin na merong pin support and roller support. So the members of rigid frames and beams may be subjected to shear forces, bending moments, and actual forces under the action of external loads. So yung magkakaroon tayo guys sa beams or horizontal structures natin, beams or rigid frames, yung internal forces natin, uh, hindi lang actual no? Unlike kanina sa trans lang, yung members niya is subjected to actual force lang. Pero dito sa beams natin or rigid frames, meron tayong tatlo. So for example, meron tayong applied forces in our beam. Meron tayong concentrated, uh, distributed load, triangular loading, tapos may naka-incline na concentrated load. And syempre, magkakaroon tayo ng reaction forces. Sa pin support, meron tayong dalawa. May vertical and horizontal reaction. And sa roller, vertical reaction lang. Ngayon, for example, uh, magkakaroon kakat tayo guys dito. Sa members natin, at any point along the beam, kahit saan ka dyan guys mag-cut, so meron dyan internal forces and moments. So for example, dun nga ako guys nag-cut, magkakaroon tayo guys na internal forces. So una, meron tayong actual forces, and yung designation natin is letter A. And yung, as you can see, pag kinusure natin yung left section, yung actual forces natin is tension and going to the right, yung direction niya. Pero pag kinusure natin sa right section, yung beam natin, yung actual niya, tension pa din, kaso going to the left. Meron din tayong internal force na shear. This a shear force. Sa left section, yung direction niya is downward positive. This the sign convention guys, no? So yung shear natin na V positive downward. Pero pag nilipat natin sa kabila, yung shear natin is positive upward na. Then we have also another internal force or internal moment. Pag sa left section, ang kinusure natin, yung direction niya positive counterclockwise. Pero pag nilipat natin sa right section ng moment, yung direction naman niya is 
clockwise. The internal force has always occur in equal but opposite pair. So, kanina nga, so, pagpababa dito yung shear, tempre, pagpalipat doon sa right section, yung shear natin magiging pataas na. Para nga, ang, ang purpose niya guys is for equilibrium. And yung internal force natin and moments, usually ano. So, sinusolve natin yan guys, no? These internal forces, uh, A or the actual load, B, shear force, and moment M represents the resultants of the stress distribution acting on the section of the beam. So, itong guys, mga internal forces and moments, these are resultants. Hindi siya reaction guys, no? Resultants sila. And these internal forces can be determined by applying the equations of equilibrium. So, yung beam natin, as you can see, this is a plane structure or 2D structure. So, ang gagamitin lang natin is 3 equations lang. So, meron tayong summation of forces, horizontal equals 0, summation of force vertical or along the y-axis equals 0, and summation of moments equals 0. So, 3 equations ang ginagamit natin for 2D structures. Ito guys yung solution lang. So, para masolve natin yung D, yung A, and M. So, for example, meron tayong problem. Uh, determine the shear and bending moment at point B of the beam show. So, we have a cantilever beam na fixed supported ang isang side, ang free end ang isang side. So, subjected yung cantilever beam sa distributed load na 20 kN per meter. And we have a moment na yung direction niya is counterclockwise at point C na merong 500 kN meter. So, pinapanap guys, uh, the shear and bending moment at point B. So, yung B natin is 6 meters from A and 4 meters from C. So, solution guys, ikat natin guys yung ano na, yung section B nga. Meron tayong left section and right section. So, para mas madali guys, isolve yung internal forces and moments. Mas maganda sana kung gamitin natin yung right section kasi pag ginamit natin yung left section, mag-usolve pa tayo ng reactions. So, para dito guys sa problem, yung internal force natin, meron lang tayong V na shear force and meron din tayong moment. So, wala tayong actual guys. Uh, yung loading natin dito sa cantilever beam, walang horizontal forces, kaya hindi siya magkakreate ng actual loads. So, magkakaroon lang is the shear force and moment. So, tandaan nyo guys ang direction ng shear guys ha, pag nasa left section, so downward siya. And yung moment natin sa left section is counter. Na pag nilipat natin sa right section, kabaliktaran sa kabila, which is yung moment naman natin is clockwise, and yung shear force natin is upward. So, isolve natin guys using right section. So, summation of force vertical equals 0. Equate natin lahat ng force na pataas. Equate natin sa lahat ng pababa. So, yung pataas natin na force lock is only V na shear force. And sa kabila, yung load natin na 20 kN per meter times 4 para maging concentrated load. Ibig sabihin, yung shear force natin is 80 kN positive. Then, summation of moment at V equals 0 naman. Equate natin yung lahat ng clockwise moment, equate natin sa lahat ng counter. So, at point B, ano ba magkakreate guys ng uh, clockwise? So, magkakreate ng clockwise is M, yung moment at B, plus yung 20 kN times 4 meters para maging concentrated, times yung moment arm, 2 meters from point B, equals to, yung magkakreate ng counter is the 500 kN meter. So, meron tayong moment na 340 kN meter. So, another solution guys, in solving the shear force at B and moment at B, so we can use the shear and moment diagram. So first, so bumun natin guys yung reaction sa fixed end guys. So meron tayong vertical reaction na 200 kN. Ay hindi ko na guys ipakita yung solution kung paano nakuha yung 200 kN. Then meron din tayong reaction na moment at A na 500 kN meter counterclockwise. So meron tayong shear diagram na 200 kN uh, positive dito sa side na to. And triangular yung shear diagram natin. So yung shear natin at point B, this is 4 meters from point C, no? So, dapat parallel yan, guys, no? So, ito yung solve natin na shear at B. So, by using shear moment diagram, uh, we will use by ratio proportion para makuha yung shear at B. Then, para makuha yan, gagamitin natin yung bigger area na triangle and the small triangle. So, by ratio proportion, uh, height over base, yung bigger triangle na 200 yung height over base na 10 meters equals sa yung smaller triangle na uh, height over base din na height niya is the shear B and the base 4 meters. So, meron tayong shear at B na 80 kN din. Same din kanina sa solution natin. Ito naman guys yung moment 
diagram. Actually guys, sa turo naman to guys sa strength materials no, kaya hindi ko na guys sinusol iniisa-isa yung pag-solve ng shear diagram and moment diagram. So in drawing ko na guys no. So meron tayong moment at A na negative 500 kilonewton meter and meron din tayong moment at C na 500 kilonewton meter pero positive. So ito guys na curve din sa second degree and nagkaroon ng second degree guys na curve dahil sa first degree from the shear diagram. So this curve guys is a curve from a parabola and kung nasan guys yung vertex ng triangle, nandun din guys yung vertex ng parabola. So as you can see this parabola opening downward. So ito guys yung vertex ng parabola din. Para masolve naman natin yung moment at B, so this is the moment at B and para masolve yan, so we will use by square property of parabola. So, gagamitin natin guys itong larger parabola. Yung distance niya is 1,000 kasi 500 yung dito plus 500. I-neglect guys yung negative, no? So, i-consider natin dito yung total height ng parabola which is 1,000. So, by yung square property of parabola, height over base squared. Kaya, 10 squared to. So, yung 10 natin guys is the distance horizontal from the vertex. X value natin is 10 squared. Equal sa 500 minus MB over 4 squared. So, paano natin guys nakuha ng 500 minus MB? Kasi, uh, ginamit natin guys itong small smaller parabola na may height na 500 minus MB or the moment at B. Kasi ito guys, di ba 500 to? So ito, by moment MB din. So, ibig sabihin, itong height ng smaller parabola, 500 minus MB. Then, yung base niya is 4 meters. Pero, dito nga sa square property parabola, dapat yung base natin naka-squared. Kaya, first squared. Uh, I-calculate lang natin. So, meron tayong moment at B na 340 kilonewton meter din. Another solution guys, pwede gamitin nyo is the shear moment diagram. Basta yung importante, pareho guys yung value na makuha natin. So that's it. Thank you. So yung next topic natin dito sa sexual theory is the uh, de determinacy, indeterminacy, and instability of structures. And thank you very much.